first letter of the Hebrew alphabet is also known to be the first letter of all creation. So here we go. Now, I want you to have a pen and paper in front of you. And I want you to write as I write. I want you to kind of really to follow along with me. Because we're not doing this class live, this is a pre-recorded session. So I need you to engage with me. All right, stay engaged and follow along. So take out your pencil and paper. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw the olive. And I'm going to show you the easiest form. It's called the block letter form. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually draw a line. It's kind of a diagonal line, all right? So here we go. Let me see if I can get a little darker marker for you, okay? And I want you to just draw this diagonal, there, that's better, huh? Diagonal line, just like this, diagonal line. And let's draw one more diagonal line, okay? Now the next thing I want you to do, in the upper corner, okay, of your letter here, I want you to draw a, just a small little letter like this, okay? So let me show you that letter over here in the big form. So this is just like this. It's kind of uh, like a half of a door, but it's not large, it's a tiny letter. And you're gonna draw it up in the right hand corner and then you're gonna draw another one down at the bottom. You can even put it a little bit more over. Here we go. And one over here. 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 One over here. Okay? This is the letter Olive. And let me give you a nice darker line there. So this itself is the letter Olive. Now Olive is a silent letter. It has no sound. Zilcho no sound. However, it does take on the sound of the vowel, okay? Which we're going to learn in the next lesson. Now, what are these little letters or signs that you are writing with the out, okay? First and foremost, these little letters are called the yod. Sometimes you'll see them yod or yud, and they actually mean hand, and they are the tenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. This little letter often starts the name of God. It's the very first letter of the name of God. It is also a uh, the letter that uh, begins O. Oh. So this letter is the often the first letter of the name of God. It means hand, and this diagonal letter is actually what's known as a vav. So this letter in and of itself all right, we say is hand, and this letter is vav. And vav means and, okay? So there's a lot of very, very exciting things that we learn with this letter alone. But one of these insights is that you have a hand above and you have a hand below. Hand above and hand below and you have a connector 
or a separation, which often can be and is likened to the firmament of heaven. And so you have this whole quest for the hand of man to connect with the hand of God. So God and man hand in hand, all right? We also see there's a symbol here that has to do with the upper waters and the lower waters and the, the essence of the concept of Havdil, the concept of separation that we find in the very first chapter of Genesis where God separates the waters from the waters. Okay, so the last thing about this, which if you've watched any of the previous videos, you will learn that this letter itself means ox or oxen. It means teaching. It also means multiplication. And it means thousand. I'll put a S there. And these are all concepts that are applicable to this letter because they share with us some insights about God. And we see these insights in the very first chapter of the book of Genesis. What do we see? First of all, after God creates uh, and separates the waters from the waters, he it creates light and he separates it from darkness. He separates the land from the waters, all of this. Then he begins to fill it. First he separates, then he begins to fill it. And he starts to fill it with seed, trees. He puts trees on the land and the trees begin to create fruit after their own kind. Then he puts grass on the land and the grass begins to reproduce after its own kind. So inside of the, the trees and the seeds and then we have the fish and we have the birds and we have the, the animals and then we have man is the, the ability to reproduce after its own kind or multiply, all right? So we learn that God is a God of multiplication. And that holds true to every aspect of life. And he doesn't just multiply once or twice, he multiplies in the thousands and into the millions and into the billions and into the trillions and into the quadrillions. Multiplication is endless as we see in the heavens and in the earth, all right? Multiplication is endless. And the other thing about God, right from the beginning, what does he give us? He gives us the Torah. Torah means instruction. So, First of all, he separates, then he fills, and then even in that process, he, he, and then even in that process, what does he do? He teaches us, he instructs us, and he begins to teach us uh, his ways, his thoughts, his purposes, all right? So he is a teacher. And then we find something very, very interesting. Not necessarily in the first chapter of Genesis, but three chapters in, four chapters in, we find it. And that is the, the concept of the oxen. Even though it is in the first chapter, uh, I'll bring you to the place where he says to Adam and Eve, or Adam and Chave in Hebrew, he says to Adam, because of your disobedience, you are going to have to till the ground. You're gonna actually have to work the ground and plant the seed. And so this is really, back in the day in agriculture and farming, 
the that's what the oxen did. He was the animal of the plow. And he would have to be yoked with another similar animal, another oxen, but usually not one is strong. So you had a strong oxen, which is the one that led, and then you had was yoked with that which was weaker. Okay. But this is also the concept of the yoke. And in Hebrew, and in not only the language of God, but in the the entire uh, idea of God, it's God yoking himself with man. And so even when we say the Shema every morning, Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad, the reason we say it is so that we yoke ourselves with the kingdom of heaven. So the oxen is also representative of the yoke, and that is that connection once again between God and man, the yoke. And so God says his yoke is easy, his burdens are light. So through learning Hebrew, you are going to find and gather insights into this concept of yoking, as we yoke ourselves with the language, we're going to find our way in uh, relationship with God. All right, so let's stop here uh, because I kind of went into the insights into this letter and we won't do this with every letter as long. Uh, but starting with the first letter, we will. Now, one last thing though, I do wanna say before we leave this letter, and then the next video is going to be on writing the letter and uh, getting a little bit of practice there. Okay, so what I wanna say before we leave this letter is I also wanna say that every letter in the Hebrew alphabet has a number. It is a number, okay? Uh, so they didn't just use Hebrew as the language of communication with words, but also with math or, or numbers. So numbers reveal just as much as the words do. And the first letter, of course, is the quintessential number one or unity. So when we're counting in Hebrew, also Aleph, is the number one, and anything and everything can be multiplied by one. So, with that said, I will see you in the next video.